He was going to run things off, and her opponent was able to pull it back together, and it was 12-10 in the seventh game. So gives you an indication of the mental fortitude, as Kanak Ja just noted about Lily Jong. This is a young lady that's extremely experienced and has that uh, unusual or innate capability of just not getting down, staying in the point. It's one of the elements that I really like about Kanak as well is that you rarely see Kanak in a circumstance where he has given up on a game or a match or a point. They just play them one at a time. The opponent is noted for the boys in the pregame show today is Lou Ying. And Lou Ying is a uh, known as a defensive player. Some people say a chopper, which will be interesting. Watching Lily warm up earlier today, she was actually going through a number of drills her coach actually brought over a young gentleman who plays a chopping style, and they they worked on some of the strategic decisions that are going to have to be made in this tournament. Obviously, with you have a player who uh, plays a strategy of kind of waiting you out, as defensive players will do, and look for the opportunity to attack. You might have a little bit different strategy than you would against a player who's a more attacking style. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Lily plays here. As the brilliant Matt Hetherington just noted, Lily has had success in the past against choppers. You talk about as we're joined now by Matt Hetherington. Good pregame show again by the boys down there. And thank you very much for joining us here, Matt. It is a pleasure. And as I was saying down there, I'm really looking forward to this match. And very interested to see how Lily does and how she copes with a style that uh, Obviously, she's a little bit less comfortable with. It's interesting, Matt. You know, she's playing a defensive style player today. She hasn't had a whole lot of practice time. One of the elements about Lily Jong, as many of these young players in table tennis, and particularly when they reach the college age, is these are very bright young kids, and they're putting a lot of their time and energy, properly so, into their education at UC Berkeley for Lily Jong. And that's no easy feat to try to combine a college education uh, with yeah, elite level table not. tennis. Yeah, and I'm actually kind of glad we're getting the opportunity finally to have one of Lily's matches on table one because then we get a chance to discuss this more. She really has given a lot of her time to school, but extraordinarily has just managed to perform so well uh, over the last two or three years, really not training as much as before, I mean, okay, before the Rio games, uh, she took a year off school and she went and trained, but this year she's been working really hard to kind of make up for that time away and uh, not able to practice as much. But she still came out and made the last 32 of the World Championships and won the Pan American Cup in, in just really clear fashion. So she has this extraordinary ability to really maintain her level and... Uh, as Kanak said when we were down on the pregame show, just such a complex mental game that really allows her to just step back up to the table and get straight into a match. And she leads 2-0 early on in this match against Liu Ying. That's long and Ying is on the board. It's interesting in the first two points, Matt, Ying had made a couple of errors, and from a chopper's perspective, if you're a defensive player, you cannot have unforced errors. You're you're going to be a quick out if you're not on your on your game. Yeah, that's right. At, but at the same time, the the difficulty in defending is that it requires a lot of touch and small adjustments. And every attacking player that you play against is different. Some play with more spin. Some play uh, faster, more powerful. Sometimes they're playing and the ball's arcing a bit higher or shallower so it does take a few points just to kind of work into that rhythm and you'll notice that the rallies will get longer as the match goes on as both players kind of figure each other out and get into a comfortable zone that they can move forward within the match. From an attacking player's perspective it seems like you've got to make sure that you're patient as well that you're not too anxious to end the point it's absolutely yeah patience is really the key and you'll see just down there on that point a little bit rushed and really that's what a defensive player wants to happen they want to force as many errors as they can 
because it not only awards them points, but it really shakes the confidence of the other person if they keep kind of picking these shots that they think are a little bit easier and missing them. And the ball bouncing a little bit shorter there than Willie Jung was anticipating. Now finds herself trailing here in this first game of the best of seven in the women's quarterfinals at the U.S. Open presented by Supermicro. Quite generating enough spin on that backhand ball. You can see she kind of tried to drive through the ball rather than looping from under the ball. And that popped up just enough. When you're a two-time Olympian, you're not <laughs> going to miss that. <laughs> if you do, you know you you might be in trouble. So now at five four. Lu Ying with the serve. I would imagine that sometimes for an individual who has a more aggressive personality, I'm not saying that Lily does, although she does play in a sort of style, it's hard to kind of keep yourself under control mentally to say, you know what, I'm just going to have to wait out a lot of these points. It's going to be a long day. Yeah, and that's where her experience will really help her. And, of course, her match yesterday, she was incredibly patient going all the way to seven after being 3-0 down and played some really long rallies. Super example there of a slightly more modern defensive style. So stepping around to use the forehand attack. It was a good decision there by Lu Ying. She had the open side on Lily's backhand and really aggressively pushed the ball to the edge of the, the table. Stop. It's been interesting. I know we're early in the match here, Matt, but Lily, one of the strategies she seems to be applying at this point is a lot of short balls, a lot of trying to force uh, Ying to stay a little bit tighter to the table. Hi, it's 2016 Olympian Lily Zhang, and I'm here. So, relatively level here in the first game. Both players just trying to extend the rallies. Getting a bit of feeling in the match. Yeah, again, we see this strategy. It looks like that she's hitting, Lily's hitting a chops, try to keep them short towards the net on the on Ying's side of the table to force her to come up. And then once she gets a ball that she can handle, if Ying's up tight to the table, she's going for the more assertive play. Yeah, that's right. She'll want to shift uh, Ying Lu off balance. And uh, usually you can get a little bit of a higher chop ball when you're able to do that. Unfortunately for Lily, she hasn't really been able to convert a few of those opportunities. And uh, that could have turned this game a little bit more in her favor. But she's still doing well to hang in here at 7-7. So we'll see how she handles the rest of this game. Right into the body, a good powerful loop by Lily Jong. Difficult ball for Lou to handle, and uh, it was right on her belt buckle. You can see how much body weight goes into these shots when you're playing against a chopper and you really have to lift the ball. In the slow motion replays or the close-ups of the table, you actually see on a lot of uh, 
strokes. Lily Jung pushing up so much into the ball that her feet actually leave the floor. So it's a really a game of stamina for both players. And like we said in the pregame push, very long rallies. And uh, these can be really enduring table tennis matches. And now a good job there. Pushes it to game point here in game one. Two point advantage at 10 8. Four time national champion and the reigning champ. In the same city in July of 2017. What an impressive performance in the final against Jennifer Wu. It'll be interesting to see here if she can go all the way in the US Open. One thing that will really play in her favor among this group of quarterfinalists is that being a two-time national champion, she's played in these outside venue conditions twice and won. So she has a little bit of an edge if she can make the final and just being a little more familiar with uh, how, you know, how scheduling works and warm up and all the timing. And sometimes it can be a little bit of an overwhelming experience for some players. Good job by Lou to step up on a high ball and jam it right into the body of Lily Jong and ties things here at 10 here in game one. And the serve will shift back over to Ying Lu. Nice exchange there by Lily Jong. Very patient and then worked both corners to finish the forehand down the left side. I was actually really impressed with her change up on that last shot. You might get a chance to see it in the replay here. The ball popped up a little bit, but she realized on a number of occasions during this match, hitting and driving through the ball hasn't worked out for her. Just kicked the ball up. Enough to win the point. But on this occasion, she'll revert to that slightly flatter forehand drive. Requires a lot of acceleration, a lot of really snappy uh, and concise strokes to be able to get enough power on that ball in a short space of time. Otherwise, you'll find yourself dumping the ball in the net on a lot of points against choppers. And doesn't quite have the trajectory on that one. Now the advantage has shifted over to Ying Lu here in game one. And the serve shifts back to Lily Jong. Close to the edge there. Quick reflexes from Lou, but again drawn up. 12 12. That will be quite a relief for Lily Jung. It's not often that you get to win such short points against defenders. Now with the advantage, Lily Jung out of Morgan Hill, California. And she wins game one. 
So the four-time national champion takes the first game in this best of seven. Why don't we get some advice from Lily Jong? She's going to teach us a little bit about a short ball step around to the forehand. Hi, it's 2016 Olympian Lily Zhang, and I'm here to demonstrate how to play short ball and step around to the forehand. So first, you want to take your stance, and for the short ball, you step in with your right foot, you hit the ball right off the bounce, you step back, you pivot, and you play a forehand stroke. For more information, please visit USATT.org. Well, tip from one of the best in the business there, Matt Hetherington. And a really handy play that I expect she'll be using quite a lot in this match. Uh, you'll see her stepping in, and there's a lot of switching for her between being offensive and staying in control. So I think we'll definitely see a lot of uh, pushing control from Lily Jung, stepping into uh, just kind of touch play some of those defensive shots from Liu and then she'll be utilizing a lot from her forehand to follow up on those but a good start here for the two-time US Olympian Lily Jung excellent return of service that time by Liu a little backhand inside out chop that went down to the forehand side of Lily, difficult ball to respond. She was unable to. Just sends that one sailing over the end. One thing that's important to note in these uh, defense, defend, attack and defender games is that the defender has a few more tools that they can use in spin variation. Looks like the umpire will just call for Bit of a warning there to throw the ball up straight. Uh, so defensive players will often be changing the spin a lot and you'll see kind of there are subtleties between each ball and you have to make very quick decisions and be very focused on that uh, to know the difference between a ball that's coming heavy and a ball that's coming with very little spin at all. Because a lot of the time if you're playing and it's heavy, you're gonna put all your body weight pushing up into the ball and then if the defensive player switches to no spin and you repeat that shot you're going to send the ball sailing way over the end so spin variation a big weapon for defensive players we got a high bounce there and slammed it into the body of Ying Lu came up to attack a little bit more, but really was able to hold on, get the ball deep onto the table, and as Lin Yu was backing, or Ying Lu was backing away, she got jammed on that ball. Zhang within one at 2-3 in the serve. Ying Lu, who plays out of the Golden State, Table Tennis Club, one of the number of really good table tennis clubs that are in Northern California. Yeah, it's become quite a hotbed for table tennis in the state of California. A lot of national team players across all age categories coming from that area of the country. Lost ball here. See if we can find it under the stands at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Want to welcome everybody, welcome everybody who's joining us here on this beautiful morning. I know we're at Pacific time, so it's still morning here in Las Vegas, Nevada. A little warmer today than it's been over the last couple of days. I've had to fight off a little bit of a uh, chilled throat and cold. I'm battling through it, and I appreciate your patience with me, Matt Hetherington, <laughs> and everybody else who has to listen to the, my. Uh, impression of Froggy there on the Little Rascals. <laughs> I 
And no, it didn't come from late nights at the gaming tables for me. So let's get that on the record right now. <laughs> Good spin control from Jung to begin that rally. Good shot that time by Ying Lu stepped up and stepped around on a hard forehand with the backhand side of Lily and now has opened up a three point lead here in game two. Three six Lily Jong serving. She's going to have to be careful when she's playing those uh, kind of interim shots of uh, pushing around between attacks. Wow, great counter from the defender. Yeah, I mean, she doesn't want to play too many opportunities for Ying Lu to attack the first ball. She does have a prof fairly proficient forehand, as you've just seen there, not just on counter, but on opening as well. And that's a uh, kind of risk you have to be careful of when you're playing against the modern defensive style, is that if you do play too passively, then uh, it's going to switch pretty quickly from chop to attack, and you're going to be in a little bit of a trouble spot. And I think in this game, too, we've seen that Ying Lu is a little bit more assertive, a little bit more aggressive. And the precision of Lily Zhang, not quite where she would like it. That one was long, and now trails by six. Here in game two. She is up one game to none. Wow, superb job by both players. Ying Lu doing a Really, really good job. Just see, throwing her whole body out wide on that one, but all part of the plan. Lily Jung had her tied up way across to the other corner. But it'll be six game points for Ying Liu to draw this match back up. And that does it. She gets it on the first one, and Ying Lu bounces back in game two with an 11 4 victory and has evened this best of seven at one game apiece. It appeared to me that Ying Lu did come out with a little bit more aggressive style in that second game, not quite the traditional look of a chopper. And she showed, as you noted, Matt, that she's got the skill to counter and open with a very powerful forehand. Yeah, and that makes her. Uh, really unpredictable, which uh, can be hard when you're, when you're playing against a chopper. A lot of the time, if they're not as aggressive, it becomes a little easier to build up a rhythm and you kind of get into these patterns of playing. But uh, Ying Lu kind of came out and showed that uh, she has a bigger range than the typical chopper and she's not afraid to come in and take those early opportunities to attack. You know, not too long ago, Lily Jong was a participant in the World Championships that were up in the Toronto Metroplex here in North America and actually made it all the way down to the round of 32 in Matt Hetherington. That is really saying something. That is elite company to be in. And she really, again, wasn't practicing probably at the level she would have liked to, yet still made it into the round of 32. Lily Jung is going to have to find a way to cut those errors down. I've definitely seen her putting a few more into the net than over the end, so probably just needs to commit to the shot a bit more. You could see her lift her body weight away from her leg rather than driving into the ball. So she's almost 
trying to lift into the ball a bit too much rather than driving your body weight up into the ball. So I think a little bit more acceleration would help, uh, which will help her get some more net clearance and also uh, give her a bit more of an arcing trajectory so that she's not going to miss those over the end. Which she just did again. So Ying Lu, who won game two rather handily at 11-4, has now jumped out to an early 3-0 lead here in game three. The game's tied at one apiece. We really won the first game in extra time, as they say, 13-11. It's actually funny that you should mention uh, the World Championships. Uh, one of two events that she played last year was uh, the World Cup in Toronto, the World Championships in Dusseldorf, where she made the last 32. And I was actually fortunate enough to be there playing. And uh, I watched the match that she ended up going out on. And she did, even though she was in really good form, she did end up losing to a defensive player. So. I mean, it is an area that she struggles with, and you can see that she's not quite as comfortable as she would be. I mean, if you watch her play against people who play topspin. Wow, great counter. A big lead developing here now for Liu. So I did misspeak. It was the World Cup in Toronto. It's, it's a confusing World Cup. I mean, most sports don't have a World Cup and a World Championships. And uh, I think now... There's also going to be a World Team Cup coming back next year, which is, I think, in London. Uh, so you have a Men's World Cup, Women's World Cup, World Team Championships, World Individual Championships, and a World Team Cup. So there's a lot going on. <laughs> there's a lot going on. Can be hard to keep up with, but at the same time, uh, puts on offer a lot of great table tennis for spectators. Which is never a bad thing for helping grow this Amazing sport. And I believe it is the World Team Championships that USA is actually in the bidding process attempting to. That's right, yeah, for uh, 20 2020. 2020. In the Northern California area as well, Same which would be interesting. It. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. And Lily Zhang opting to try and take the ball early with the counter. Now down 7-1. And they're going to check the ball here. It may be cracked. So Ying Lu immediately looked at it. So Lily Zhang, this year's national college champion in the U.S. as well. Playing for UC Berkeley. Not quite having found her rhythm in this match yet. And what a great point. One of those fine examples of what we would expect from an attack versus defense match. Ying Lu doing a superb job there back from the table being able to defend against someone who's really driving through the ball but this she's time through that one she won't want it to come back this time she's gonna put it out to the forehand corner bit of a change up there you could see that Ying Lu was kind of starting to position herself on the backhand side trying to anticipate what was coming so really rapid fire decision making from Lily Jung and another missed counter there interestingly enough given this change up uh, you can see that it's nowhere near as comfortable for Lily Jung. And I was just talking before about how much more relaxed she is when she's playing against topspin, playing those counter shots. But seems that when she's playing against defense and then the, the opportunity to counter comes, that she's not quite prepared for it. Or maybe just a little bit unsettled. Good third ball there. She was perfect position and the ball popped up probably a little bit higher and a little bit shorter. 
than Ying Lu would have liked. Great placement into the body there by Lily Chung. And now draws within three. Serve is to Ying Lu, 23 years of age. Leading 8-5 here in game three. Game's tied 1-1. Women's quarterfinals. And just a little bit of uncertainty there. You could see she just kind of hesitated a touch when she played that forehand drop and a fairly straightforward shot for a player of her caliber finds the timing there very confident strikes that time by Lily Jong to draw within three again. Now nine six. And one more serve in this sequence. Good placement. That was deep to the forehand side. And Ying Lu, who had Chopped the backhand back onto the table, was trying to recover and get her balanced on the forehand side, but just wasn't quite set for that one. It was behind her by the time she was able to get the edge of the paddle on it. We're really starting to see Lily Jung trying to open up that forehand line. Oh, great counter by Lily Zhang. As Ying Lu tried to power one down the forehand side, <laughs> waiting on that with the home run swing was Lily Zhang. Yeah, the last couple of points, she's really found her timing with that shot. That puts a bit more pressure back on Ying Lu to maybe think about being more defensive and choosing the chop on the forehand side rather than topspin. Again. And three times now. Down 6-9 and now tied at 9-9. Nine -nine. With the serve as it shifts over to the 21 year old from Morgan Hill, California, two time Olympian. And we're going to find out pretty soon if uh, that's had a bit of a mental effect on Liu as to whether she'll continue to play topspin and look for those forehand opportunities or whether she's going to be more defensive. And the backhand flip catches the edge of the table, and Lily Zhang is now. Taking the lead in this game three at 10 9, and she's got one more serve. And boy, she really want to close it out here. Interestingly enough, you'll see that beginning action on that slow motion replay that Ying Lu was, in fact, going to go for the chop on the forehand side rather than playing topspin. And she's going to. Cover more defensively. Oh, oh, great return by Ying Lu. Really wide ball there from Lu. Great he, play from both players. Absolutely. Jung was almost in total control there. Outstanding work to get that ball really wide to the backhand but just wasn't quite in position there to deal with that next ball. She's really going to have to knuckle down if she wants to make up for that lost opportunity. And Ying Lu looking to be the aggressor. Nice step up and Forehand loop just caught the top of the tape and bounced high and out. And Lily Zhang again with the advantage here in game three, 11 10. More people coming in to check out the action in this match. 
as I said, a big fan favourite, Lily Jung. And a little bit risky there. It's very difficult to uh, figure out the right weight transfer when you're playing against Chop and also trying to play inside out as well. Again, you can see she just stepped, pushed her body weight kind of away from the ball. And when you're playing against Chop, you really need it to be going a bit more vertically up into the ball. Ooh. And an early apology there from Lily Jung as she gets a little bit lucky, but what an outstanding job by what a save. Lu to yeah to return that ball. And that's elite table tennis right there. Never you talked about this yesterday, Matt. You never give up on a ball. That's right. And a lot of players that are, have already been eliminated from this tournament. Probably wouldn't have uh, committed to that one. These are and the survivors. As Ying Lu comes from behind and really seemingly down and out and wins game three and takes a two games to one lead. 13-11 as uh, Lily Zhang appeared to be in control of that game three. After coming back, she was way down at one point, 7-1. She battles back, has a couple of advantages, and looked like she was going to take a third advantage on a ball that hit the side of the table. And Ying Lu was able to save it, not only win that point, but win the following point as well. Yeah, surely she'll be a little bit disappointed um, the longer these matches go on. It's just such a taxing uh, match on both players. And, of course, we're only in the quarterfinal stages here, so there's potentially two more matches remaining uh, for one of these players if they advance all the way. And, uh, yeah, it's a huge energy drain. And no doubt Lily Jung will be a little disappointed at playing a really exceptional rally and not being able to convert her game point. But at the same time, being down 7-1... Uh, a good fight back, just, you know, 9-6 down, and she won three points in a row to draw it up and then give herself a chance to convert the game. So it's much better for her to put in that fight. And obviously, you don't give up, as you said. Uh, but just to have a bit more momentum going in her favor, she'll feel a little bit more control, regardless of whether she's not in the lead for the score. And just a touch soft there from Jung. You always have to be really careful when you're making slower variations, when you're playing the slow loop with a bit more spin, because sometimes you kind of underplay the ball. You go for a little bit too much touch and not enough acceleration, just thinking, OK, I'm just going to pop this one over a little bit softer. Now Ying Lu, as she has done now in three consecutive games, has gone up to an early lead of 2-0. Oh, and another attempt there at going inside out. Your body's in the same position she was in game three there, Matt, and uh, again, just not able to convert on that inside out forehand. Yeah, as I was saying, you just have to generate a ridiculous amount of acceleration to be able to change the direction while you're playing against the backspin ball at the same time. So, a couple of opportunities lost there for Lily Jung, but as we know, she'll keep fighting and proved that yesterday in her match in the round of 16. Nice recovery there from Lily Jung. She looked a bit out of the point. Wasn't quite sure what to do, but. 
Ying Lu used both edges of the table very effectively on that on the backhand side first and then went over to the forehand side and hit the tape on that side as well. It's a really good lesson here for developing players that are watching is when you're not in position or you're not entirely sure, it's always better to rely on spin and get back into the point than to try and win, especially for times when you're not in the best timing or you're a little bit off balance. It can be very easy to think, okay, I'm just going to take a swing here and try and win the point outright, but as shown there by Lily Jung, always good to just get the ball back in play and keep grinding. really struggled throughout this match. I don't think, we haven't really seen her go for those flat drives as much across the second and third games. Let's struggle a little bit with the timing and the trajectory as well. Put a few of them off the end. Clearly frustrated there. At that level, it's very, very uncommon for players to lose points in these pushing exchanges. It's quite a straightforward, basic shot. And again, just lifting a little bit too much into the ball. You could see her entire body weight come right up there. Now down by five here in game four. Down two games to one. Lily Jean. And interesting there to see Lily Jung almost baiting. Ying Lu just pushing to the forehand saying, come on. Take gonna, a swing. You, she you, did. You're going to have to take it eventually. And then just kept pushing her buttons. Managed the great counter but couldn't finish the rally off. Oh, almost hits the table. Some superb returns there from... <laughs> She's Ying never Lu. out of the point. Ying Lu is... I don't care what's happening. Amazing job there to pick that ball up off the net and make a very, very difficult return for Jung. But perhaps here we're seeing another one of those momentum surges from Lily Jung. She's going to have to make an extra effort here to try and win her way back into the game. Doesn't want to be down 3-1. Puts a lot of pressure on her to win three games in a row though not out of the realms of possibility as we've seen and a good placement there to the body very hard to defend out of the body Oh, great shot by Louis Jean. Cross court slam. Catches the edge of the table on the forehand side of Ying Lu. And no answer there. One of the rare circumstances where you see that Lu has no chance to return it. Mm. And a good example of great placement, both the last two points, both at the elbow and the wide forehand. And here we go again. Lily Jung just inviting a forehand opening. It's not going to get it, so takes the initiative first. Very strategic play going on here. And Lily Jung draws to within one point. Again, another 
great comeback in this game. And this time, Ying Lu gives her that forehand opening. Good use of depth and the change of depth that time by Ying Lu. Went short, then long, and very difficult to recover. Yeah, and also played right into the middle of the table where Lily Zhang was standing, so she's learnt her lesson after quite a few points now have been counted off the forehand side of Lily Zhang. And that little run of points is going to give her three game points here to take a 3-1 lead. And a nice flat smash drive there from Lily Jung. You can see how low the ball was to the net. Not low enough. And with the serve, Ying Lu, and two more game points. And Lily Zhang again, waiting for that forehand opening. As I said earlier, she's much, much more comfortable playing against topspin. So she's really trying to encourage that from Ying Lu. And here we go again. Oh, and a great play by Lou. Stepped up, went to the backhand side with the hard loop, and she claims game four, and now has taken a three games to one lead on the four-time national champion, two-time Olympian Lily Zhang. So she's got to go back to her corner and regroup. And one of the elements that she does not want to fall into once again, as she has in three consecutive games, Matt Hetherington, is to fall deep behind Lou and then find yourself having to try to battle back into the game as it progresses. Yeah, she really needs to take that momentum a bit earlier and uh, turn it into a lead rather than a deficit. I think this uh, kind of fishing tactic she has of uh, really just feeding balls to uh, Ying Lu's forehand is, okay, maybe on the first couple of occasions it worked, but seems like a little bit of an obvious strategy. I mean... We can see up here, I mean, few, a few points in a row where she's just pushing continuously back to the forehand of Ying Lu. And that, now that Lu has been become a little bit wiser to it, uh, you can see that she's just taking her time and choosing the ball that she wants first. And then when she gets in position, she knows that if she plays the first forehand opening to Lily Zhang's forehand, she's going to get counted off the table. So on those two occasions that she did attack this time, the first one went to the body. The second one, she waited for that push to come a little more to the middle, which gave her the angle to play out wide to the backhand. So she caught Lily Jung at her own strategy there. She was a little bit ahead, and uh, Lily Jung's going to have to do something a little bit different. She starts with it again here. And off the tape and double bounces on the side of Ying Lu. So in contrast to the last three consecutive games, it's Lily Zhang who strikes first here in game five. Trailing, however, three games to one. And again, you can see her foot just lifts up a little bit early. If you watch here, you'll see her body weight transfer. It's a little bit soft. See how her left foot lifts up. Usually when your left foot lifts up, your body weight needs to balance back down onto your right foot. So when you're trying to push your body weight up from your right foot, that can really hinder the weight transfer of the ball.
precision just not there for Lily Zhang. And this is not the time to be inaccurate against a player as patient and effective as Ying Lu has been certainly in this match. Yeah, and I think the point you raised about uh, the flow, kind of flow of points and the need for Lily Zhang to get off to a strong start in this game is really, really crucial. So she's really going to have to settle in here and bunker down. She needs to get this game or she's going to be out of the 27, 2017 US Open. It's a title she's never won before. She's got a huge number of accolades to her name. For a player of 21 years age to have represented the USA at eight world championships, uh, just very, very impressive, but not a US Open Women's Singles title, not yet. And she we're does have, have that bronze medal, which isn't a bad thing. That's for true. Youth Olympic Games, but you know, I know these guys, are, people are never satisfied. They want to always want to go for what hasn't been attained. The mark of a great athlete. And Lily Chung. But she really is a great athlete. When you watch her, she's very athletic. She has a, the mindset of an athlete, clearly. I've had the opportunity and the, the good fortune to be able to watch her at the Nationals here, and she just strikes you as a real pro player. I know she's in, still in college, but she really has that, that appearance and demeanor. Oh, yeah, I think, I mean, she apps, if, if college wasn't her priority and uh, she wanted to pursue that path of becoming a professional player, I think it's very much within the realms of possibility. She's proven that even as, a, not even as a full-time player, she's been able to beat players who are in the top 50 in the world, sometimes with relative comfort. So, um, yeah, she is an incredibly impressive athlete. There we see it right there with the beautiful counter by Lily Zhang. And another look at that. She's in perfect position to strike this forehand. Steady play there from Lily Zhang. Just grinds away. You play a chopper, you've got to be willing to put in the work. Even if it takes 20, 30, 40 shots, every point is a point and contributes to your winning potential towards the end. Interestingly enough, there have been some ridiculously long points between defensive players. And I know on two occasions, I know the beginning of this year when I came back from China, I walked through the airport baggage claim and on the television here in the US, on the news, they were playing a, a table tennis point that went on for more than 10 minutes between two defensive players. Can you imagine the longer and later that point goes, the pressure building on each of those two players not to lose that point, uh, investing 10 minutes of your life into one table tennis point? It happened at the uh, 2014 US Open in Grand Rapids as well. First point of the match between two Japanese defenders, and uh, they were on the top four table courts, and uh, I think one of the men's singles matches, by the time the point finished, it was already 2-0 in games. <laughs> Really missing there, and now finding herself in a bit of a difficult spot. She's going to call the timeout, and I think appropriately so, because this is a pivotal moment of this match. She's down three games to one, down three points, 8-5, and it's going to go over and think this one through. This is the 2017 U.S. Open presented by Super Micro, kind of hanging in the balance for young Lily Zhang. 
And we've seen before that she's found herself in difficult positions and be able to extricate herself. But this is going to be a challenge against young Ying Lu, who's done an exceptional job. Patient. She's been aggressive when she's needed to be. She's hit winners when the opportunity has presented itself. And quite frankly, you look back at that ball that hit the side of the table. Not really the side. It, it, it was on the table. There's no question about it. It, it, mm -hmm. it hit on the table. And, but it was about as close as you can get to the edge without hitting the side. And a huge save by Ying Lu that would have given Lily Zhang an advantage mm -hmm. in what at the time yeah. was uh, game three. Yeah, and uh, just after a match point as well, she definitely, I mean, that those couple of rallies towards the end of that game were really uh, a bit, quite a big deciding factor in how this match has played out. That's not the way that Lily Zhang wanted to come out of the timeout. Now trails by four, and perhaps even more importantly, the ninth point, which always seems to be a, an important milestone in these games, is won by Ying Lu. There's a very definitive forehand loop by Louis Zhang. Very confident. Draws back within three now. At 6-9 and the serve here in game five. She's down three games to one. It's the best of seven. So Ying Lu is one game short of advancing to the women's semifinals. Swing off the edge of the paddle from Ying Lu after a couple of patient exchanges again. This time it was Ying Lu who wanted to be the aggressor. Misfired, and now Lu Zhang finds herself within one. Serve is still with Lu here at 9 8 in game five. Now 9 9. A pair of consecutive assertive forehand loops that time by Lu Zhang. Very confident and at the appropriate place in the table. And Ying Lu actually turns towards her corner and looks for a little encouragement. You almost feel like uh, Lu Zhang plays in kind of a mental slingshot where she falls. I don't even know. I mean, she, she, she starts the, the beginning of each game and falls behind, but then really just uses that uh, need to fight to really slingshot her back and sometimes past her opponents. And we're going to see if she's able to do it here. Oh, oh and a difficult high ball. Lily Jung can't do anything but smile at. Now match point. Again, another fine example of the defensive skill. Great of saves. Ying Lu. Great saves. And that does it. Too big a backswing from Lily Zhang. A nice comeback in that game, but not enough. And Ying Lu has advanced to the semifinals with a rather impressive, what would be 12-14, 11-4, 13-11, 11-9, and then 11-9 victory, winning four consecutive games. 
against the reigning national champion to advance the semifinal. Ling Yu, who really, I thought Matt Hetherington showed some fine examples of playing from a defensive style, but as you noted, more of a modern defensive style where she was able to transition and become the aggressor and become the assertive player when the opportunity presented itself. Yeah, and it definitely made it a bit harder to pick out weakness uh, from Lily Jung. We saw her go through these phases of kind of finding tactics that were working, but Ying Lu, a very skilled player, quick, always quick to adapt, and uh, she was able to close out some very close games, the last three games, 13-11, 11-9, 11-9. Jung really not doing enough in the first half of each game uh, to be able to assert herself in those games. And I think, as you said quite early on, that early lead really made quite a significant difference uh, in the end result. So unfortunately for the Lily Jung fans out there, out of the women's singles event at the 2017 US Open and the defender Ying Lu will advance to the semifinals. We got a lot more to come today, including we're pushing all the way to the men's semifinals a little bit later in the afternoon, but a lot more to come from there. I think we're going to get Ryan Willard and his expertise in here in just a moment. Matt Hetherington, as always, it's a pleasure working with you. Looking forward to coming back, maybe doing some more work later this afternoon as well. We'll take a break, be back with more of the U.S. Open presented by Supermicro.